As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. You only live today once. Why do it alone? Branch together. Hey everyone. Today's reading is one of the most loved sections of the Bible, Hebrews chapter 11. It's often called the Great Hall of Faith, and we'll see just why in a little bit. Let's take a step back and look at the whole story of this book for just a few seconds. In the first chapter, we see God reveals himself now in these days through Jesus. In the past, he had revealed himself through the prophets. And those of us who are going through difficult times in our faith, we need to know this Jesus, who is God's revelation. Jesus is the better version of many things that the Hebrews held in high regard. Angels, Moses, priests. And because of this Jesus, now we can approach God directly. We can also persevere and have faith. Which brings us to chapter 11. What is faith anyway? Let's pray and then we'll read this chapter and we'll talk a bit about the uh, picture of faith that we get from this chapter. God, thank you for your word. Lord, today I ask that you speak to us through your word. God, some of us, um, some of us may struggle with having faith. We may struggle with trusting you and putting our faith in you. Lord, I pray that as we read this, that you build faith in us, that faith is built by hearing the word. And as we hear your word, that you grow our faith, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for, being convinced of what we do not see. For by it the people of old received God's commendation. By faith we understand that the worlds were set in order at God's command, so that the visible has its origin in the invisible. By faith Abel offered God a greater sacrifice than Cain, And through his faith, he was commended as righteous, because God commended him for his offerings. And through his faith, he still speaks, though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not see death, and he was not to be found because God took him up. For before his removal, he had been commended as having pleased God. Now without faith, it is impossible to please him, For the one who approaches God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith Noah, when he was warned about things not yet seen, with reverent regard constructed an ark for the deliverance of his family. Through faith he commended the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place he would later receive as an inheritance. And he went out without understanding where he was going. By faith, he lived as a foreigner in the promised land, as though it were a foreign country, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, who were fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with firm foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even though Sarah herself was barren and he was too old, he received the ability to procreate because he regarded the one who had given the promise to be trustworthy. So, in fact, children were fathered by one man, and this one as good as dead, like the number of stars in the sky and like the innumerable grains of sand on the seashore. These all died in faith without receiving the things promised. 
But they saw them in the distance and welcomed them and acknowledged that they were strangers and foreigners on earth. For those who speak in such a way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. In fact, if they had been thinking of the land that they had left, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they aspire to a better land, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. He had received the promises, yet he was ready to offer up his only son. God had told him, through Isaac's descendants will carry on your name. And he reasoned that God could even raise him from the dead. And in a sense, he received him back from there. By faith, also Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the future. By faith, Jacob, as he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped as he leaned on his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, mentioned the exodus of the sons of Israel and gave instructions about his burial. By faith, when Moses was born, his parents hid him for three months because they saw the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, when he grew up, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be ill-treated with the people of God than to enjoy sin's fleeting pleasure. He regarded abuse suffered for Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for his eyes were fixed on the reward. By faith he left Egypt without fearing the king's anger, for he persevered as though he could see the one who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the one who destroyed the firstborn would not touch them. By faith they crossed the Red Sea as if on dry ground, but when the Egyptians tried it, they were swallowed up. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after the people marched around them for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute escaped the destruction of the disobedient because she welcomed the spies in peace. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets. Through faith they conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gained what was promised, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength in weakness, became mighty in battle, put foreign armies to flight, and women received back their dead raised to life. But others were tortured, not accepting release to obtain resurrection to a better life. And others experienced mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, sawed apart, murdered with the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins. They were destitute, afflicted, ill-treated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and caves and openings in the earth. And these all were commended for their faith, yet they did not receive what was promised. For God had provided something better for us, so that they would be made perfect together with us. There are three big sections that stick out to me. First, there is this description of faith. Faith is the evidence of things unseen in those first three verses. This isn't really a definition per se, but it describes faith in a poetic manner. Secondly, we have the example list. Uh, This is a rhetorical feature called an exempla. It goes something like this. By faith, so-and-so did this. This phrase, by faith, is used anaphorically, which is a fancy way to say that it gets repeated many times at the beginning of each new line. This drives the idea into the reader's mind. By faith. By the end, you're left saying, okay, I understand. By faith, that is the way we're to live in this world. The example list is awesome because it basically recaps the Old Testament story in a short poetic form and focused on highlighting what faith looks like in practice. Any one of these lines could have been a wonderful sermon on faith. 
Then we see that not all these heroes of faith received what was promised while they were still alive. This is the third piece. But they are still our examples to look to. They're the ones we look to to define what faithful living looks like. But they didn't receive what they were hoping for, at least not in this lifetime. But the author tells us that that is okay, because God has in store for them something in the future, perhaps even after their earthly bodies pass away. Two things I want to say today. Number one, I think it's telling that faith isn't exactly defined here. There's actually nowhere in the Bible that faith is precisely defined for us. The overture of this chapter is beautiful. The language is compelling, but it's not exactly a definition. Rather, the author spends his time, the bulk of this chapter, telling us examples of what faith looks like. For me, this reminds me that I need examples and models in my life regularly. I need to read stories of how the heroes in faith responded, both in the Bible and perhaps modern day heroes. But I also need to be around people today that are living faithfully and watch how they respond to difficulties and see what they deal with. And secondly, even these heroes of the faith didn't see what was promised in this life. In fact, some of them were imprisoned, murdered, tortured. They were left destitute. They were sawn apart, stoned. Yet they were commended for their faith. Even though they didn't see many blessings in this world, perhaps, they were commended. We should not always expect things to go well for us. And when they don't, we can't turn our backs on God. At the end of the day, God is going to judge our faith by our faithfulness, not by the outcome of our circumstances. And you know, on that second point, I want to be careful, but I can't read this and with good conscience stay totally silent on this topic. There are very popular preachers on the radio and TV that would that would make you think that if you're really a person of faith, God will give you prosperity here on earth or healing from your sickness or deliverance from your trial. Let me just say that there are people saying they preach Jesus, but they don't. God is absolutely in the business of restoring the brokenness in our lives and in this world. But sometimes God lets the most faithful people go through hell on this earth. If that feels like you, I honestly don't know when God's going to step in and bring healing or restoration in your situation. But take heart. As you're faithful through this trial, the creator of the world is giving you applause. The picture I have in my mind as I read this chapter and particularly these last few sentences, it's something like this. I see, I see God standing and calling each of these faithful people who have been beat up on this earth. He invites them to stand next to him, applauding them and shaking their hand and giving them a formal commendation in front of a vast array of heavenly hosts who respond with deafening shouts of joy. That's what I see, and that gives me hope today. How about you? What did you see as we read this chapter? We'll see you tomorrow.